You're kissing frogs for drinks. You're giving out hand jobs for two hundred dollars. We just came here to dance, baby. We just came here to dance. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hey girl, my name is Coca Lola Jazzy, whatever you want to call me. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, leave a like, comment, and if you are returning, hey sis, welcome back, and thank you so much for coming back. Now, today, <clears throat> tonight is nighttime. Tonight, we're going to do a story time about the time that I flew this girl out. Worst time ever. Like the worst time ever. Literally. If you want to hear about this story, then stay tuned. We ain't drinking no water today. We got the... We getting straight to it. Okay, so y'all, I used to post a lot of money. I used to post me traveling a lot. And I would have a lot of girls like messaging me like, girl, put me on, put me on, what you do? Uh, take me with you, blah, 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 blah. Like I had so many girls in my inbox all the time like put me on put me on put me on so this one particular girl i knew her from school like i went to college with her so i literally knew her and she kept on asking me like can you take me with you hold on hold on and she was like hey girl i dance I'm looking for a dance partner i see you be doing this and that and, that, and i wanted to you know i want to see how do i get on with you so so she was like i want to be your dance partner um whatever what you need me to do i can do whatever and basically i was like so what you trying to do she was telling me like she makes a lot of money in her home club and she's like a top earner girl in her home club and blah 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 she was literally just she was literally telling me everything that i really wanted to hear so i was i was really down for her to come with me I'm like okay bet sis like when you trying to come and she was like really i can come whenever so i'm like tomorrow and she was like i can come whenever and i was like okay i'll book you i'll book you a flight tomorrow girl and i'll pick you up tomorrow so we had talked about like she was gonna be my dance partner or whatever and i was in miami too i was in miami she was in i don't even know i think she was in um she was in like a weird ass state somewhere like somewhere weird that i don't I, to the point where i don't even remember what it was it was like somewhere like never heard of so she flew from there to miami i literally pick her up the next day boom Everything is going good so far. Everything is cool, but she was she was a little quiet, but I didn't think nothing of it because I'm quiet too when I like first get around people. But I mean, we knew each other, but like we don't really know each other like that. So I wasn't really expecting her to be like, ah, whatever. I just, she was quiet. So I was like, okay, cool. You know, I was trying to make, I was trying my best to make her comfortable because I know how I am when I first get around people that I don't really know like that. I'm kind of really like standoffish and reserved. I don't, you know, put my whole person personality. I don't do too much when I'm first, you know, meeting somebody. So I didn't really expect her to. So I was like, okay, cool. But everything was cool. And so I tell her like, I'm gonna be working tonight. I don't know. I know you just got off a plane and everything. So you can just stay in the crib, you know, get some rest or whatever if you don't want to work. So she was telling me, she was like, oh, girl, I didn't bring my dance shoes and my and I need some more dance clothes. And I was like, OK, no problem. She left her dance shoes at the at the club that she worked at back at her home. So I was like, OK, no problem, no problem. We can go to this little, you know, I know this little spot that we can go to. They got cheap shoes. They got nice little outfits or whatever. So you know let's go but 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 y'all she was like oh see i don't have the money for it right now and this is where i was like this is where i should have been like questionable but i was like oh girl I'm, it, it's it's okay i got you i'm gonna pay for you i got whatever you know whatever you need i'm a, you know i got it for you so i wasn't really 
I was trying to be like so supportive and I was, I mean, I flew this girl out and everything. So I'm just like, I want to make sure you're comfortable. I want to make sure you got everything that you need. So she said she didn't have the money for the shoes and whatever. And I was like, okay, it's cool. I got you, you know. I didn't tell her to pay me back. I didn't tell her nothing. I just said, I got you. So we go to the dance store. We get the stuff. I buy the stuff. And we're about to go dancing in the club. We're about to go dancing. We're about to go get the bread, okay? Okay, so at the time, like, I'm really, really, like, petite. Well, I mean, I'm still petite. So, I'm really petite, but you know, I got a little, I got a little something, something, something. So, I'm really small and petite. She had, like, doom, doom. Like, she was stacked, okay? No, 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 no lie, no cap. Baby girl had the whole package, okay? So, I'm already knowing she about to make bread in the club. Like, there's no way she could not make money in the club. So, we get to the club. Boom. She starts saying, oh, my God, like, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. And I'm like, what are you scared for? I thought you danced in the club back home. Like, I thought you was, like, a top dancer in the club and at your home club. And she was like, I mean, I am, but it's different because I guess she worked in, like, she worked in like the white club and I in the club that we went to the club that I worked in it was like a black club so it is two different like settings and everything so I understood her but I was like so we gotta get this money <laughs> hey y'all so I recorded footage of the story time and then like a clown, mm -mm, I accidentally deleted it. So now we're going to go in. We're going to act like we like getting unready. We're going to start over. We're going to jump in from where I left off, which I didn't. The last clip, I don't think I didn't go into too much detail anyway. So after I picked her up from the, hotel, from the airport, everything was normal. She was staying with me. Let's just fast forward on because we don't even need to talk too much about the backstory. Basically, she was like, I thought I found like my bestie basically because she would agree to everything that I would say. Like, I'd be like, oh, I love apples. I love apples too. That's my favorite. Like, I love this. I love that. And it was basically like everything that I would say, she would always agree to it. That's, that's kind of a red flag. Like, if you meet a friend or a boyfriend like that, that's a red flag. I just want y'all to know that. Because people will mirror you and try to act like you in order to, you know, be around you. But that's just another story for another day. Anyways, let's fast forward on to the part where... um. Where things, we just fast forward on to the part where things get interesting. Sis had been with me, basically staying with me for like a month. And we had been working at the same club. We had been working at the same club for literally that whole month. The club that we worked at, it was like a weekend club. So you didn't really work there on the weekday unless you was like, selling cat or you was new and you want to practice you know it was a weekend club so nobody really worked there on the week besides people that was you know selling cat and you know people that was just you know there to practice so she wanted to work every day like she was like i got goals i got this i got that i need to do this i need to do that i need money so she would go every week I mean, she would go like every day. She would literally go to work every day. And me personally, I didn't like to go to work every day because I don't like the possibility of not making money at all. I don't I don't like that. Plus you have to pay. So imagine I had to pay a hundred dollars to work in a club and I don't even make or I, I only make a hundred dollars and I had to pay them a hundred dollars to work. Mm, they don't sound like something I want to do. So I would, I would always tell her, like, I would come to the club with you, but I'm not going to work. So basically, I would go in as a customer, and she would go dance. So this is where it starts getting, like, interesting because we never used to work during the week, but she started out of nowhere, like, she wanted to work during the week. And she started getting comfortable in the club, 
I told y'all she was acting like real shy. Like she didn't, you know, she didn't, she was scared to dance and all that stuff. She eventually got over that. She started getting comfortable in the club. She started meeting a lot of people. She started like, you know, getting like some regular customers and stuff. And she started like, oh, I need more money. I need more money. I need more money. But when she got money, not, I'm not even going, you know, I ain't going to cap. Sis was, she was good. She was looking out like, like when we first start when she first got there she didn't have the money for her stuff and i paid for her stuff i paid for our food i paid for everything basically she lived she paid me back for everything and then like sometimes she would like let's go out to eat she'll pay or she'll be like let's go to the mall she'll buy she'll buy me something and it was cool i'm telling y'all I, th I thought that i found like my soulmate best friend like we was so cool we were so close and we was together for like a whole month she started meeting more people she started getting you know getting more known out there because i was already there so i already knew some people but she started like getting to know a lot of people fast so then she started wanting more more money so she wanted to go to the club during the week but i'm telling her this is not a weekday club this is a weekend club like it's not a lot of customers coming in during the week because they know that it's a weekend club but she insisted all the time she wants to go during the week she wants to go to work every day so one day oh pause let me tell y'all about the um the club owner he is so disgusting like the most disgusting nigga i ever met in my life he is so nasty like ugh. he is so ugh. so let's get into him so one day well one night we went to the club and i went in as a customer of course she went in to dance so before she got dressed and everything we went to the bar so they barely like i'm telling you people really did not work at this club during the week they barely had like i i, I don't think they even had bartenders like during the week so the owner of the club he was the one like doing bartending and stuff so we go to the bar and we like we want some drinks me i want to drink because every time basically i would literally just go in the club drink sit at the bar and just you know be a customer but you know so we go to the bar and we asked him for drinks and he like i'll give y'all drink i'll give y'all free drinks if y'all give me a kiss And I was like, no thanks, I'm paying for my own drink. Fuck. And she was like, it's just a kiss. And I was looking at her like, girl, this disgusting ass nigga, I'm not kissing him. Is you stupid? You, you listen, you literally cannot pay me to kiss this man. I don't care if it's on the forehead, on the cheek, anything. No. Ew. He is the most disgusting nigga I've ever met in my life, probably. So, she was like, it's just a kiss. And that's when I started, like, kind of side-eyeing her. And I was like, mm, you would kiss this frog. <laughs> you would kiss this frog for a free drink. You're cutting up, my friend. You're cutting up. I said no thanks. I'm gonna pay for my drink myself. I threw my money on it. I threw my little money on on the um, counter. Give me my drink. I'm not kissing you. You stupid. So she was like, it's just a kiss, and then she gave him a, a kiss like on the cheek. I was still like, ugh. But anyway, so the night goes on. We, you know, we vibe and we having a good time. I'm drinking. I'm getting a little buzz, but I was driving, so. She did not, she didn't know how to drive too, by the way, y'all. She didn't know how to drive. We the same age. She didn't know how to drive. She said she was scared to drive. She didn't have a license and some other stuff. So basically I was always the designated driver. I was always driving us all around and I, that wasn't really no problem, but yeah. So I was getting a little, you know, a little tipsy, not, not too, not too crazy. So, um, what happened? So it was dry in the club and it wasn't, it was like two customers in there and she had went back to like a private room with one customer and then she came back and she was like, ooh, 
I got $200. Like, yeah, I just had to give him a hand job. And I was like, you just had to get more what? You're nasty. <laughs> you had to give him a what, friend? She was like, yeah, I made $200. I just had to give him a hand job. And I was like, I was in so sh I was in so much shock, y'all. I was just in so much shock, cause okay, she's been here for a month. She ain't never really told me like she was into doing certain stuff. But that night, I just feel like I don't know what was going on. I don't know, but she just you're kissing frogs for drinks. You're giving out hand jobs for two hundred dollars. We just came here to dance, baby. We just came here to dance. You're starting to do some strange things for a little change. And I'm not feeling it. But do you, baby girl? <laughs> so, you know, I started thinking that was a little strange and everything. But I don't be one to be so quick to judge people. Do you, baby girl? Just as long as you don't be trying to recruit me to do stuff. That's when we're going to have a problem because you know what I do. You know what I don't do. Don't be trying to get me to do stuff because it's not happening. It's not happening, baby girl. So, fast forward. Um, Y'all, my friend, she, like, the girl, she used to talk to, like, a whole bunch of different niggas. Because she wasn't linking up with these niggas. She wasn't, I don't, at first. From what I've seen, I don't think she was ever linking up with these niggas or doing anything with these niggas. She just used to talk to them. And they used to come in the club sometimes and, like, you know, give her money, spend money on her and stuff. So I was like, you feel me? That's what's up, my friend. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. Get your bread. But one night, I was, me and her, we both was dancing this night. And so on our way to the club, she told me that this dude that she talked to was coming to see her in the club. And, excuse me, she said that he never seen her dance in the club. She didn't meet him in the club. She met him outside the club. And she just invited him to the club. And blah, 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 blah. Mind you, she talks to a whole bunch of different niggas. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So this night, me and her are both dancing. So we get there. We, you know, the night is going, the night is going, the night is going. I was working, really just minding my business. And then this guy comes up to me and starts talking to me. And I'm in work mode, you know, so I'm talking back, duh. He asked me like, what's your name? Like, how old are you? Where are you from? Blah, 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 blah. Who even comes in the club asking all that information? Like, why do you even wanna know? While I'm talking to this dude, I see homegirl keep looking at me from the other side of the club like she's like literally staring at me she just she's she's over there with other customers and everything but she just keep looking over here at me like staring at me like and i'm like what the fuck so i had the dude wasn't he just kept asking me questions and all this weird stuff and he wasn't spending no money so i was just like um yeah peace so i walked over to her and i was like are you like, what's wrong? Are you cool? She was like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. And the vibes got weird. Like, the vibe got a real, real, really weird. <laughs> she was staring at me from the other side of the club like, I, you know, like something was wrong. I asked her what was wrong. She was like, oh, nothing. Ain't nothing wrong. And then she started acting weird, like, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? She like, girl, I just, like, my night just not going good. I got attitude, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I proceed to, you know, go to work. But when it's time for us to go home, she stays with me, right? And she rode there with me, right? So when it's time for us to go home, she was like, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go home with another, like, another girl that works there. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I grabs my bags, I packs up, and I get ready to go. And I'm like, you sure? Like, <laughs> you sure? Like, making sure because she ain't never went home with nobody else, unless it was she ain't like she never like went nowhere with nobody else. So 
I was just like making sure like everything okay. And she was like, oh, everything cool, everything cool. So I get in the car and I drive my ass home because I'm tired. It's like probably like four in the morning and I get home. And when I get home, she texts me and she was like, um, you know that guy that you was talking to? And I'm like, what guy? We, we work in the strip club, sweetie. I talked to a lot of guys that night. <laughs> what guy are you talking about? And she was like, oh, the guy with dreads, with this, with that, he had that on. And I was like, oh yeah, what about him? And she was like, that was my friend that I told you about that was coming to see me in the club. And I was like, oh. Oh, that's interesting. And so at that point I started putting like two and two together. So I was like, oh that's why she was giving me death stares from across the across the club because her friend was talking to me so now rewind back to the part where i told y'all homegirls talk to a lot of niggas i've never seen this friend before she told me about him she did not tell me what he looked like she did not tell me who he was she did not show me no pictures of him or nothing so i'm not knowing who this person is that's coming to see her so i was like oh i didn't know that it was i didn't know that's who it was and she was like yeah he told me he was only talking to you to make me mad and i was like um okay and then that's when i started getting like real okay the vibe was already weird now it's getting super weird because it's like you told me that because like now it's giving you trying to be shady a little bit it's giving you trying to be shady a little bit so because like why would you even tell me that <laughs> first of all i honestly don't care why he was talking to me Cause I'm in a club and I'm working. I don't care why I know, listen, when I'm in the club, I don't care why these niggas talking to me, okay? I'm here to get the money, okay? That's it. I don't care why you talking to me. I don't, I don't wanna know your personal life story. I don't wanna, you don't need to know mine. I don't care. I don't wanna date you. I don't wanna be your friend, your girlfriend. I just want, the money so i didn't care why he was talking to me and i didn't understand why she had to even add that in there she was like yeah um he's taking me on a date this weekend and he told me he was only talking to you to make me mad and i was like it's giving shady sis but okay so y'all the crazy thing is when we was in the club and he was talking to me he was asking me if he could take me on a date and then the type them the type of niggas that i walk away from because like why is you trying to tell me you're gonna take me on a date after the like after i leave the club like i'm at work this is my job i came here to get paid i didn't come here to meet no nigga to take me on a date so i didn't end up, i didn't i didn't tell her that part of the story because i was like okay sis so is giving shady but like yeah the nigga asked me to he asked me for my number he asked to take me on a date and i was like no but the thing is i was like how did he okay if he was talking to to me to make you mad how does he even know me because i've never seen him before he's never seen me before <laughs> so did you is you like i just i'm like was you trying to set me up like was you trying to make it seem like I'm trying to talk to your nigga or something like that's what it was like I felt like she was trying to like set me up like she probably sent him over there to talk to me so she can be like oh she talking to my nigga and I was just like mm -mm. she was staying with dude for like a week and we were still she was staying with him for like a week or two and we were still working at the club together but she literally would not talk to me in the club or nothing she just was acting real real weird and one day i had 
I had just pulled her to the side in the club and I was like, look, I don't like these little weird ass vibes that you're giving. I don't like this weird shit. And I told her basically like, I feel like you're mad about this nigga and I don't even know who he is. I didn't know who he was when he was talking to me. And we in the strip club, sis. Don't invite your nigga. To, this is your first mistake. If you really like a nigga or want a nigga or whatever, why would you invite him to the strip club to see you? Because he's not only going to see you, he's going to see other bitches too. So he's going to talk to other different bitches too. So you can't be mad that he's talking like... Like, this whole situation, it was just weird. So, that's why I just kept telling myself, like, is this a setup? Like, am I being punked? Did you, like, do this on purpose so you can say that I'm talking to, like, I'm, I, I don't know. It was just, it was just so weird. And, again, we live together. You've been staying with me for a month. And all her stuff was in my crib still. So, I was like, I mean... Basically, I talked to her, told her, like, how I feel. I feel like you've been fucking weird, and I didn't like it. I didn't appreciate it. And she was like, like, oh, I understand. It's no hard feelings, blah, 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 blah. Basically, acting like everything was cool. And she was like, oh, I'm going to come home today. And uh, I don't, it's like, we not beef. I don't have no problem with you. It's not about that. I just needed some time to myself, blah, 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 blah. So then that night, she rode home with me. She came home. When she came back home, she started acting real, like, even more weird. So, she was back to being quiet, like, when I first met her. Like, literally that first day and that first week that I met her, she started acting like that again. And then it got even more weird than that because she would just not say anything at all. She would just be there and she would just not talk. And then, like, she will talk on the phone to people and, like be whispering on the phone and stuff and I would go to sleep I would wake up she'll be sitting on my bed when I wake up just staring at me and I'll be like like what what are you doing she oh I, I was just about to ask you a question so at this point I'm like this girl is like freaking me out like what are you doing what was you doing in my room sitting on my bed while I was asleep you acting really stranger like what are you trying to do to me she would either be sitting on my bed standing at my door watching me um staring at me in the kitchen just just walking past me staring at me like she was going to do something to me and that went on for like a week so this was around hurricane season so we got like oh all over the news a hurricane was about to hit so i'm telling her we have to leave. We about to, you know, go get a hotel somewhere, you know, further away um, in Atlanta. I was like, we got to leave. We about to go get a hotel in Atlanta because a hurricane is about to hit. And, you know, I ain't trying to be a part of that. So we go to Atlanta. Road trip. All right, so my, from Miami to, from Florida to Atlanta, it's like a nine, eight hour drive. So we take this long ass drive. Mind y'all, she don't know how to drive, so I'm driving by myself. Time in the car, like, she, she was talking to all her family and friends and all this texting, and she wasn't, like, really talking to me. Again, it was weird vibes. So we finally get to the hotel. After a long ass drive, of a long awkward ass drive at that, um, she in the bathroom talking on the phone to dude from before, the dude that was talking to me in the club. She was on the phone with him, telling him, "Oh, I don't, but I don't mess, with, I don't really like her." Talking about me, telling him that he don't, she don't like me. She just wanted to come to florida she just wanted to get flew out to florida she just wanted to make money she just <sighs> dragging me she was in the bathroom with the shower on thinking i can't hear with the shower on but you're in the bathroom with the shower on literally dragging me to this man telling him like she don't mess with me um she just wanted to 
come to Florida to make a bag and basically I'm not on her same type of time because I'm too scared to do this and that blah 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 girl girl so y'all I sit here patiently waiting for her to get out the bathroom I sit there patiently waiting because now at this point I really was I really want to be her ass really but it's like I flew you out here you only know me now we're in Atlanta you don't know nobody in Atlanta you didn't know nobody in Miami I'm trying to be mature about the situation but I really could just beat you up and put you out I really could but she came out the bathroom after I waited patiently and I said if you don't like me, you can leave. And she was like, what? She was still on the phone with him too, by the way. So she was like, what? What are you talking about? I said, if you don't like me, you can leave. I didn't, I don't care if you don't like me, sis. You don't have to like me. You don't have to even be around me. You could have been left. <laughs> You could have been gone. What? Okay, and like I said, she was on the phone with dude still. So she started trying to get a little tough. She, cause he's hearing me telling her this shit. And she gotta try to prove that she's somebody or something. So she started getting a little tough. And I think she said she, she was like, she was gonna beat my ass. Or she was gonna punch. I think she said she was gonna slap me or punch me or something. I don't know what it was, but I, one thing about me, I don't, I don't do threats. Like, I don't do threats at all. I don't care if you even, I don't care if you pretending. I don't care whatever. I don't do threats at all. So, you said you was going to slap me, I'm going to make you do it. And if not, now I'm going to slap you. Now I'm going to slap you. I feel, I feel like New York, slap me, bitch. Slap me, bitch. I'm going to make you slap me. And if you can't, now I'm going to slap you. So I got the you gonna what? You gonna you gonna what? You gonna what? You gonna what? You ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> Pop! It went down that day. It went down that day and that was like our that was our checkout day. It was literally like an hour before we had to check out. I checked out that hotel and I left her ass there. Like in Atlanta. See now she was out she was outside the hotel with her bag and I left her ass there. You don't like me? You don't have to like me. <laughs> you don't have to like me at all. You don't have to even be around me. I don't have to be around you. We both win here. I left for ass. I did, and it's crazy because I felt bad about it. I felt bad about it. And I kept on checking in. I kept trying to check in with her to see like if she was still alive and if she was okay. Obviously she's still alive to this day, but but you what you not gonna do? is talk shit about me right in the next space and I can hear you and for what and you still around me and you're still using my resources because you don't drive you don't have a car you don't have nothing you still using all my resources and all my stuff and you think you about to stay around me then you said you was going to slap me you not going to slap me. You got slapped. <laughs> you stupid. I put her ass out. Get out. It was already time to check out anyway. I just threw all her shit out. I just put that shit outside. Dude. Put that big ass bag she had outside the hotel. Checked out the hotel. And I went somewhere. I don't even remember where I went to, and I don't even I don't even care. But she didn't go with me, and she kept on like making on making posts about me on Facebook, talking about I was fake and I did her wrong and blah 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 blah. blah. Girl, I don't care. See so ass in the funny papers. Don't be trying to use me. Get caught, and now you're salty because now you're homeless in Atlanta. <laughs> 
that's your own problem. You should never did that shit. And I really did feel bad because, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on these days. Anything could have happened to her, but but you, you really had me fucked up. So I didn't even give a fuck at the time. But as the day kept going on, I kept on thinking about her, thinking about her, thinking about her. Even though I should not have gave a fuck at all. Because she definitely didn't care about me at all. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. That's the end of the story time. Don't trust these bitches. No. No. I think the girl just... Basically, the girl tried to use me the whole time. Then she set me up to try to make it seem like I was a bad person and a bad friend. Trying to talk to the dude that she liked or whatever. Which wasn't the case. Because I didn't even know that it was him. But... Yeah, moral of the story, do not ever trust anybody, ever, especially dancing. It just never works out. Literally, I could tell so many stor strip stripper fail stories because you cannot trust them people. You cannot trust them. They out to get one thing that's money, popularity, whatever. They will step on you, step on whoever to get to where they want to be. That's just that. That's the end of my story time. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.